ladies and gentlemen, Keith Galvez. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I want the mic. All right. Thanks, Eric Trice. Man, this uh, this academy is awesome, and this mini vacation is amazing. I didn't even expect this, and I got to know Eric uh, over the last two years. We've talked just a few times, and already, like he's such a humble guy. He's so down to earth, and instantly, like I feel like I know him, like him, and trust him. And so, uh, I want to give a round of applause for him for putting this together. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So today I want to talk about seven steps to marketing your business online and some of the things that I've learned in social media marketing. And we've gotten 20 million views online. But first I want to get into this. Does anybody know what this is? Distillery. Distillery for beer. So I was reading a book by Claude Hopkins called Scientific Advertising. And uh, there's a sheet in there with my name on it. And I, I would encourage you to take a few notes of some of the stuff I've learned because I want to identify the levers that you can pull to get the most amount of results when it comes to marketing and social media from all the stupid mistakes I've made, all the time that I've wasted making literally thousands of crazy videos. I've learned over all this time what works and gives you the most amount of leverage and what doesn't. So I'm surrounded by people that coach me in how to do this marketing your business. So back in the day, a hundred years ago, there's these built these uh, beer distilleries, they're beer companies, they create, they manufacture process and they distribute beer all over their town or all over the country. So there's this one famous beer company today. It's a household name, but back then there was one single shift that changed and it was just a paradigm shift for the business owner that owned this company. So Claude Hopkins in Scientific Advertising, he's one of the gods of marketing and advertising, and he's written books about it. These are people that um, charge you know, six figures just to write ads for companies like, like Macy's or any, any household names that we see today. So he goes and he takes a tour through the beer company's facility, and he sees all of this. And, and he starts asking, because he doesn't know, what is all this stuff? And as the owner of the company is breaking all this down for him, he's like, wait a second, do your customers know about this? And he's like, no, why would we tell them? Why would they even care? All beer companies do this. So do any of the other beer companies show this process? They're like, no, because we all do it. So instantly Claude Hopkins realizing that, he realized that they were all taking for granted what they had, which was so cool and so unique, but because they all did it, it was nominal. So he put together an ad where he actually showed this picture and broke down the whole beer distillery process of how they took the water and they filtered it seven times. They made everything an exact scientific process so the beer came out predictable every single time. And just by describing the process, and the owner was still like, okay, they, they blew up and became the number one seller in their entire category only because they showed the process to their customers that they were taking for granted. So all of us and all of you and your businesses, you take for granted the things that you know because you do them every single day. So we might not think to just show that to our customers, show them the process of how you guys use a, I don't know too much about uh, fleet washing and I did learn from Eric that you guys use a soap that releases a magnetic bond. And he showed me a video and even my mind was blown because I, I do landscaping and window cleaning and I power washed a truck before that took me like two hours. And then he shows me this video where the dirt literally comes off and like instantly, I couldn't believe it. That was super cool to me. So even though that might not be the golden arrow that you, if you show this to your customers and clients in videos or if you show it to them in pictures, you still have to give it a shot because all marketing is testing. You don't know until you try it. So, and, and how you do that is through literally taking out your cell phone. You don't need a bunch of cameras. Um, I, I hit like 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and something like 4 million views with my cell phone. And so I want you guys to take out your cell phones often when you're on job sites and literally just take a before picture 
remind yourself and take an after picture. Take out a video if you or one of your employees or have somebody videotape you if, you, if you're solo, and have them videotape you. It doesn't have to be a professional thousand dollar professional videographer company. Have them videotape you, literally just doing the thing and showing the dirt coming off. By doing this and doing it more and more often than anybody else that's your competition or your competitors, increases the chances and the likelihood that the customers are gonna see you. So uh, does anybody here have a, a YouTube channel or do you create videos already for your business? Tim, good, good job, good job. How many here are uh, actually like full-time in f a fleet washing? Who here is just getting into it? Who here does soft washing of houses or power washing of concrete? Okay, cool. Do you guys, do you, any of you guys videotape already what you're doing? Do you create marketing for it? So 90% of everything viewed online is, it's getting up to 90% is in the form of video. And so the power that we have in our fingertips with the cell phone to literally market our business and get more work is right there. So I want to talk about the uh, a marketing syndication method of how you can get yourself in front of your clients and customers to a point where they go online, they're scrolling on Facebook, even Instagram, local Google citations, if they're looking up a, uh, if they wanna get their truck washed or their house washed or anything near me, you're going to, if you do this enough and you do it properly, eventually a video or videos will pop up of you and your business and your company and your brand doing the thing and now you can introduce yourself to your customers before any of your competition and then they can learn, they can get to know you like you and trust you before the competition does so this really works we really do this in my business but i want to back up real quick does anybody here want to make videos for your business but maybe you're nervous to do this maybe you feel weird like, I don't know if you, you guys saw me yesterday, I was running around like a maniac with the camera, all excited. Like, that's a little extreme. I'm very passionate about that. But th the, the reciprocal of that is just kind of taking out your phone like this guy and just saying, hey, I'm Joe with Joe's Fleet Washing in Miami, and I just want to show you real quick, you don't have to be a professional or anything, you're just being yourself. You already know this stuff. And I just want to show you real quick, we're actually washing this truck or this house or right now, and I'm, I'm really excited about sharing with you the process that we use. It's clean, it's safe, it's eco-friendly. Just check it out. You can literally just videotape it. Two, three minutes. It's dirty, now it's clean. Upload it to YouTube. Fleet washing, soft washing, anything in your city. Tag and title it in the description inside of YouTube. So who here has a YouTube channel? Nice. If you don't, all you need is a Gmail account. And this is my, my homework for you. You have to start a YouTube channel and force yourself to do it. And start a YouTube channel and just make one video a week. Even if it sucks, it's gonna totally suck at first. But it doesn't matter because you are doing something that 99% of the other companies aren't doing, which is just putting out simple videos. So inside of YouTube, you, you, know, you can create a headline, a description, and tags and titles. You can put, talk about the process of what you're doing in text and then put it in the description, tagging and titling your city and your zip code. And then this is a search engine optimization, an SEO algorithm. You would say it was a hack, but now this is becoming normal. When you put this inside of YouTube and you start putting this on your website and embedding it in your blog post, it's gonna show up. And this is free marketing. Uh, does anybody here spend more than a thousand bucks a month on marketing and advertising? Okay, less than 500, raise your hand. Okay, does anybody here want as many free marketing and advertising? Like, I mean, I, when I started, I was broke. My wife and I lived in a one bedroom apartment with an eviction notice, and I was having a panic attack working 100 hours a week and couldn't even figure out how to get work. So I was taking anything that I possibly could to get just a dollar to pay my rent. And therefore, I was letting myself get taken advantage of by all these customers and clients because I didn't have anything to choose from. I, like, baggers can't be choosers. Well, the more you do free marketing strategies and tips and tactics, the more your phone rings, the more your email contact, uh, the more your, your website contact info fills up, the more leads you get. 
and the more you can skim the cream off the crop and pick what you want off of all these free marketing things that other people don't do. And one huge objection that I hear, which is very real, if you're out working and hustling and grinding and serving your customers in your business and you're in the, the do it, do it, do it mode, even if you're on the phone and doing quotes and sales and paperwork, it's crazy. And we all know that running a business is very stressful, especially in the high season. How in the hell are you supposed to get yourself and access your, the state of consciousness that it takes to get into a creative state of mind to now you're supposed to just almost, it could feel like irresponsibly letting go of your business and now I'm gonna walk around on a property and videotape? Like this is crazy, this is weird, it doesn't make any sense. So it is true that it takes a completely different state because it's state specific, a state of consciousness to do this. It's almost like you're allowing yourself to play or uh, have fun. And why I say that specifically is if you took out your phone on a job site and you were stressed out and you said, what's up, this is Joe with Joe's uh, pressure washing and fleet washing and uh, I, I don't have time to make this video, but, but I'm gonna show you the thing. Like people are like, well, I don't want to hire that person. Maybe, maybe that guy's all stressed out. And I've done that stuff, right? I've been the guy in videos before when I was trying to market to my customers where I was talking so fast because I felt like I didn't have time and I was forcing myself to do it. But just like anything, if you do it enough, you get good at it. Um, we've hired a professional videography company to do a whole window cleaning YouTube commercial. It's a commercial that's on my website on YouTube. And it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Uh, I haven't been able to calculate the ROI and how much work it gets us, but I tell you one thing, just taking out your phone and making a simple video makes all the world a difference. It's like I almost don't wanna move forward unless I can really get that thing down because in, unless I can get you to do the thing and want to do it, which is making the videos with your phone, if you don't wanna make videos, take before and after pictures. Dirty, clean. You see this all the time. But the, the, the secret is you do it more and more often. So you're not marketing to like a standing army, you're marketing to a moving parade. When you keep redoing this repetitively over and over and over, before and after pictures, and you keep posting it on Facebook, your Facebook fan page, your Instagram business page, on your blog post, on uh, Google My Business, when you're posting over and over and over and over several times a week, there's a chance that that one time that your, your customer is looking on the phone or they're in a looking state, oh, okay. It's, I mean, you're putting it right in front of them, they're gonna pick up the phone and call you. But you've been doing this frequently all along. It's just the 27th time that you did it across six months that you got their attention. And it doesn't cost anything but 90 seconds. So the marketing syndication method that we learned is helping a lot. So we have seven virtual assistants, very inexpensively. You don't even have to put them on payroll, on Fiverr and Upwork.com syndicating this content all across the internet and we're creating blog posts and articles that are showing our customers marketing is the ability to it's a, it's creating a promise that you can deliver a specific result to your customers so if you create well written blog post articles if you don't have the time you can hire people to do it you can blast this information and chop it up and put it all over the internet for free for your customers to see. Who here has a Facebook business page? Like everybody, right? Do you post on it regularly? Raise your hand. Okay, awesome. Uh, the only reason I would create a Twitter account, I think uh, you, should, you should go and create a, a social media account for every single platform that'll allow you to create a free account for your business. Just go there and create a placeholder and create a profile for your business with all matching logo, fonts, colors, everything, all across the internet because these are domain authority sites that will, that will help you show up on the first page of Google. The more of these interconnecting links that you have all over the internet with places that you've put all of your business information and profile and all of the information is matching. Your business name, the address, 
everything about your business, is the more it's going to rank in the SERPs, the search engine ranking page. So when customers go on their phone or on their laptop, you're more likely to pop up on page one or page two of Google. The quicker you start doing this and the quicker you start doing social media marketing, where other people are pulling out their cell phones and they're clicking on your links and looking at your stuff with their own cell phones, their own verified IP addresses, cell phones, is the more that you're going to cut ahead of the curve in the top 10% of the other companies which are your competition. If you don't have time to do this stuff, you can go on Fiverr or Upwork.com and hire virtual assistants for six, seven, eight dollars an hour and then they can literally write you blog post articles about your business. Uh, we have a virtual assistant, I think she's like in Colorado, it's $37 per blog post, 800 words, and she'll write us, uh, so I'll send her all the info about my company, she'll write an 800 word blog post article. You can start a blog, who, who here has a website? Okay, so you can plug a blog into your website, look, go on your website and you see if it has a blog option, and like start a blog. The more you start creating content rich, specific, valuable information in your marketplace, in your city, creating value and edu educating people about your services, is the more that you're eventually going to, and tying it into all these social media platforms. Does this make sense? I can get really deep with this, but you know, check us out on Facebook. If they're a customer who happens to like Facebook, and that's their platform of choice, then they click there, they just clicked a, black, a backlink and that equals a click. The more this shit you have going on is the more you're gonna pop up on Google and the more people that are gonna call you. And to me, this stuff is an absolute must. Uh, who here works more than 60 hours a week? Anybody here work themselves to death? Yeah, you guys like love your businesses and you're just like, <laughs> I'm crushing a dog, I'm, I have all the time in the world. Uh, for me, it's really, really hard to work all day and run a crew and do everything it takes to run a business and go home and balance the books and do the paperwork and then try to market the business on top of that. It's time consuming. I've ended up you know, punching my laptop or at the table next to the laptop and getting upset and said, I literally can't do this. And usually it's because of some specific technical block, the stupidest thing that gets you frustrated. Like how are you supposed to go out and wash trucks or power wash and do something that's creating a whole bunch of a massive amount of progress in front of your eyes. You're getting shit done all day. And now you're supposed to go home and sit in front of a computer for like four hours and do something that you can't even calculate the ROI on. So I would suggest if you can't do that and you're the type of person who gets frustrated, you need to build a marketing team and stop doing everything by yourself. And this virtual assistant thing is just, it's changed everything. I was pulling my hair out trying to find somebody that I'm gonna put on payroll and then put them in the office full time or maybe they can work 20 hours a week. I've done stupid shit like trying to hire like my little 18 year old cousin and teaching him how to do it. it didn't work. But you can go on these websites, like I said, Fiverr and Upwork, and hire virtual assistants who are experts in what they do from six to 20, 30, 40 dollars an hour. Our average is about 12 to 15 dollars an hour we pay these people. And they can help you market your business. So I'm Keith Kelfis, this is my wife. You see our little dogs running around. I love my wife, I love my dogs. The door opened, what is it? I started a brand called the Landscaping Employee Trap where I've helped thousands of guys, literally thousands, leave their dead-end jobs that they hate and start their own small businesses. Um, when I go to events, I've had people come up to me and cry and hug me and say that my, my videos have literally prevented suicide and helped stop depression. And that's my, my calling is taking the, that, that inner fight of knowing you can be your own boss and get out of a job that you hate and then go out and do it your damn self. So, and that's really what I champion and that's my message is doing that. I also started a brand called the Window Cleaning Blueprint and I've written books about this. I sell all over the world on paperback and audiobooks and really it's about helping people start their own small business. I went out in the middle of the winter of 2012 and I had no money, we had an eviction notice on our door and I was scared shitless and went into Lowe's and I bought a, a bucket, a scrubber, 
a squeegee, and some Dawn just soap. And then, uh, anybody here do window cleaning by chance? Okay, so they have like these window cleaning extension poles. I bought like the cheapest one, and by like the first uh, two weeks, there was rust all over it, and I was embarrassed going around in a little shitty pickup truck with rust all over it, walking into storefronts, asking people if I could clean their windows, and if they didn't let me, or they said no, or they rejected me, I would literally stand there, I'd be like, okay, nine bucks, eight bucks, five bucks, four bucks, three bucks, I'll fucking clean your windows for free. And I'd freak out and start cleaning their windows. And then like, if it would be like a little Chinese um, carry out place, like, no, no, stop, stop, no, no. They're freaking out because they feel like they owe me. And I'm like, damn right, you owe me, but this one's free. And I would seriously create reciprocity. And I'll say, I'll be back in two weeks. And literally within less than a, a month, I built an entire window cleaning route in business and got my bills paid. And I learned that when you overcome the feeling of being completely rejected and you just be brave and keep doing it over and over and over, you can make lemonade out of lemons. And that changed my whole life. I didn't even know this industry existed. So I put out videos for my own business, for my own marketplace and my own customers, but I also put out a, t a ton of videos for my industry and helping new guys get started. And this video right here is uh, prevented a suicide. And it's just basically me telling a guy like, you can do it. If you think you need 20, 30 grand to go start your own small business, you don't. You're literally gonna go to Craigslist or a pawn shop, sell something you own, sell video games, do anything, pick up change, it doesn't matter, and go buy like a piece of crap little uh, lawnmower that barely works and go out and start knocking and push mowing people's lawns. It's really degrading if you are a grown man in your 20s or even 30s and you realize that nothing has worked and you gotta go start from ground zero. And that's what a lot of us are afraid of is starting from scratch and being the, being the beginner. And, but that's what I talk about. This video is about people um, taking advantage of you and telling you that they got Joe Blow that can do it for half the price. And uh, in that video, I just, I get really angry and I cuss a lot and it's got a lot of views and people like it because, I mean, it's telling the truth, right? I've exposed myself and I put myself out there in a way that I was afraid could get me in a lot of trouble, but it's, it's worked out so far. So this proof we get a million views a month online, which doesn't help or do anything for you. I just wanted to put some stats in there. We have a podcast that we've created that helps small business owners. We bring on tons of guests that help um, just help them get their business off the ground and to the next level. So back to the thing, if you want to create these videos or get testimonials, like uh, I think it was, was it Jeff Evers was saying yesterday, you can do this too. You can get your customers to pull out the audio recorder on your phone, and this is called social proof, and ask the customer to leave you a quick audio testimonial and then put it in an audio file on your website so other customers can hear it. If they will do a video, go in selfie mode and say, hey, uh, Mr. Joe, we do a quick testimonial video and say how much you like our services. And if you can get a lot of people to do that, then basically two, three, four of those, it sells. When customers go on your website and they see all the social proof, they see the five-star reviews, there's a plug-in to the five-star reviews, which means they can link out to Google and see you have hundreds of, or even dozens of five-star reviews, and they see testimonials, it sells itself. You're baking the marketing into your business marketing model. You are creating a, an environment to have what you want to have happen automatically. So if you systematize making videos in, in your business, this is a marketing release form. I'll talk about this in, in, in a second. If you go through and you make a list of your customers that you think will leave you positive reviews or do a video marketing testimonial, be brave and do it, because this is the thing that will separate you from everybody else by having these testimonials. And by 2014, I realized I had made a couple hundred videos on people's properties, and I was up with a YouTube buddy on the phone having a panic attack thinking I was gonna get sued because I was going around filming and taking pictures on people's properties and posting it all over social media without any explicit verbal or especially uh, a signature or written permission. So this is one thing that got me really nervous and I was up all night researching media laws and realized that at that time we were in a gray area, which means if you got these Google cars going all over the place taking pictures of everything anyways, 
the law is basically if you're standing from what the street can see looking at the house as long as there's no street signs license plates addresses visible or anything about your customers or clients you know or personal information that's identifiable it's legal to do it all day the only people that I've had that have problems with this are people that are in the legal field like criminal defense attorneys and lawyers and stuff so we asked them you know cool customers I'm like hey we do a social media marketing and we make cool videos also to market our business and our website but we also make videos uh, to educate the industry is it cool if I take some videos and I won't post any personal stuff most people say yes but some people say absolutely not so that's what got me freaked out is when I started testing because I thought because I didn't care I thought they didn't care we created uh, media release forms you can just type in media release form on Google. You can get one. If you're really uh, critical about the nature of your business and you want to really protect yourself, go to your attorney and uh, just show it to him and make, make sure he revises it. And have your customers sign it. We put this on all of our work orders and forms, digitally sending it to customers whenever we send the proposal for work. And then they sign their name and check a box whether they do or don't want us to do it. And then we just honor that and we don't do any pictures or video on their properties. But this is something that will protect you. So not only this is my actual service business, but also my media business as well that waives any right for them to ins inspect or approve what you do. It's important. So if you, if you have a guy who's like a truck driver and you're washing his truck and you don't know that he's selling dope on the side, I should have said that. <laughs> like, and he's nervous about you knowing that and his license plate's on there, but he, like, you don't care. You don't have any bad intentions. And even though nothing would happen, people can get paranoid and weird and all of a sudden lash out on you because of something you weren't aware of that they're paranoid about. I try to stay away from paranoid customers anyways, and we definitely don't uh, do any video on those type of people's properties, but it's just a way to protect yourself by being transparent and clear. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so the does the gray area still exist that you talked about earlier? Yeah, so the, the gray area is continually, there's continually a gray area of like the wild west of the internet and video marketing, but it keeps getting cleaned up as we go by these internet lawyers and attorneys. Um, how can I say this? You have like law, the jurisdiction of law and morality, which you know what's right and wrong, which does hold up but your intentions only go so far your good intentions then you have legal jurisdiction which is in the legal world you can be blamed or accused for anything so you can ask your basic attorney and he might or might not know or you can actually go on google and type type in you know internet lawyers, video marketing, lawyers and attorneys. I've done this and I've spent like, I go on a website, I can't think of it, like $250 and I get access to a bunch of documents that other people have already paid thousands of dollars for and I just switch the wording around to make sure it matches my business. So I would go straight to the heart of the issue if you have like a specific concern and find a lawyer who specializes in internet law. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. And, it, and you were saying license plates and addresses, or those, or what is there more than that? Uh, any personal information, street signs, license plates, if the address is on the curb. So I went through and I paid a virtual assistant something like 22 hours worth of going through 400 videos I had made manually. Uh, Google has a tool that's a blur tool and allows you to blur out because. Uh, we did this window cleaning job in 2015. I was listening to a bunch of Grant Cardone at the time, like sell or be sold. Anybody know who Grant Cardone is? So I thought I was like a slick sales guy and I, my employees, I'm like, hey man, I'll give you a bonus if you walk across that huge house right now. We're cleaning three houses, window cleaning with the water fed pole. I'm like, I'll give you a $50 bonus cash if you go over and you sell that guy right now because they were out on the patio and there's a huge house on a window cleaning job he goes okay uh, how much he goes over there and he can't sell it and he comes back he says it didn't work i'm like watch this i walk over and i talk the customer into getting their windows cleaned and then i get a signature and a contract and we were really busy so we couldn't make it there till like next tuesday but i closed the job and i was like yeah bitches that's how it's done but 
Then I had this weird idea. We got the jobs done so fast. I'm like, well, we'll just go over there and do it anyways right now. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, and we literally just started cleaning the windows and the guy comes up like, what the hell? I thought you weren't gonna do it till next Tuesday. I'm like, we're doing it now, bitches. And I shouldn't have done that. And I've never did anything like that ever again. And so I was so obsessed with getting work and trying to make ends meet and become successful that uh, I, was, I started doing things that were way too proactive. But anyways, and we made a whole video about it and it was on YouTube. And I go back and I look at the video, we're cleaning the windows and go around, there's the address, oh, the cars are in the driveway, there's the license plate numbers. And I think about stuff like this. If a customer goes, let's say Joey's on YouTube and Joey's 15 and he's watching a video, I don't know. And all of a sudden he goes, hey, sec wait a second, that's my Aunt Martha's house. That's weird. And then he sends the video to Aunt Martha. She gets a text message. She's like, somebody's videotape. Oh my God, it's the window cleaners from two years ago. That's, my, that's the inside of my garage. That's my barbecue grill. Honey, call, call, call the attorney right now. Like, so I had one threat of getting sued. Some guy freaked out and called me and said, I'm, I'm calling my lawyer and I want money for this. And we were able to talk to him and calm them down and just remove the content. And it wasn't a big deal, but it took one good scare like that to be able to you know, see where the line is. So that's a whole topic. You can, if you wanna edit videos and put in uh, cool music or titles or anything, the name of your business, the website, the phone number, you could do it all on your phone. iPhone, iMovie Maker, oh, you got a question? So that's a, that's a very good question. And he was saying that if you are cleaning and it's for a, a business to business and their logo and their names and numbers are there on the trucks, right? On the trucks, right? On the trucks. I would make sure I ask the permission explicitly and get a signature of every single person you do that for because uh, like I was talking about paranoid customers, we do landscape and tree work, and I want to make a video so bad of flying a drone. Like, we do crazy ass. I team up with my friends who have companies where we, like, literally do crane work and remove trees over people's houses. The shit's crazy. And none of these crane guys will, pardon me, will fucking let me make a video. And I'm like, why? And then I start figuring out OSHA laws. The crane guys are actually scared, and they don't want to be exposed because of certain weight ratings and, and things and all these. There's so much red tape that they feel stressed out because it makes it almost impossible to comply. Like in my business landscaping and tree work, there's a high level association that, that these are the people that create the content about safety and they put out a publication in a magazine and then OSHA came and looked at it and there was one little stupid tiny thing wrong and they had to retract the whole thing and put out a new article. Like it was so stressful that even they aren't posting stuff anymore. So being very careful about what you post and making sure you get permission because you will have somebody call you up and blow up on you and be panicky because maybe his truck isn't complying and he's exacerbating that in his head. Uh, he thinks DOT is gonna pull him over, they're gonna see it. The chances of him seeing it's slim, but to him it's very real. Now that makes a lot of sense because the one company that told me, he said, between me and you, he was like, uh, in that one picture, we don't have wheel chalk now, we were supposed to have wheel chalk. And he was like, they can come after us for that. So he said, nothing against the people, but we just are not using compliance in the video that I saw. So it wasn't even up 10 minutes, he called me up and I took it down. So like, exactly. It wasn't even really about the, well, they can connect the logo to them not complying, so that made it an issue. But it wasn't really about the logo. It said it was just that they can get in trouble for not complying on the video. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so exposed. And even though if you try to explain to him the chances of that happening is so incredibly slim based off you posting that in your world, because the authorities probably don't have teams and teams and teams of people sitting and scouring random content on the internet. They're probably waiting for something to happen. But, but either way, so that might limit, to you, limit you to only being able to post a specific type of content repetitively over and over and creating stories around that to market your business. 
and, or posting only really up close of you power washing the inside of a wheel well with the tire coming clean or the back corner of a truck that doesn't show their information and then showing it to them and say hey man look this is all that's on here helps me market my business cool so yeah i've run into stuff like that before and when i talk about all this in our minds we think of things like well keith is talking about this but you know i have this thing that's very real, and it is real. We all have these little landmines or stumbling blocks that stop us from doing this. Like, you don't have to do any of this. I'm just sitting here trying to share stuff that, that works in video marketing. So, there you go, what are your deepest frustrations? And for me, I know it's, it's wearing multiple hats, especially many times a day, and the implementation of marketing and getting all this done is very painful and slow, almost impossible, and you give up, and then you just deal with not doing it. And you don't have the time. I mean, in high season, I know some of you guys work probably 80 hours a week and you go many nights without sleeping. And that's probably not the best time to put some marketing systems in your business. You have to wait till a slow time or the winter and then you put it in place then. Afraid of wasting money? Exactly. I say start a separate bank account, peel off, I don't know, 4%, 5% or your gross revenue and create an account that you have to spend that every single month on marketing. Even if it's $300 a month, do it so you're warmed up and you're primed and you're used to spending money on marketing and advertising. A lot of the stuff you can do is for free, but at some point you have to spend money. So say, that's it, I'm spending $500 a month or whatever it is for you, and you have to spend that every single month. So it's forcing you to get creative and start testing. This is more and more of the same. I've already talked about all this. This was a game changer for us. And I want to say this one more time. I kept trying to do it myself because I believed that nobody else could do it. And I thought it was going to cost me an arm and a leg. I have hired a virtual assistant that was $50 an hour. And after paying them $50 an hour for a couple of months and realizing that that person was just lying to me about all the things they were credible at doing, I realized that a lot of VAs are full of shit. They're liars. They might be good at one thing specifically, but they'll say they're good at all these things to get your work, thinking or hoping that you're not even as bright as they are when it comes to this specific thing, and then you don't find out, or you might never find out. Just because somebody is good at something doesn't mean that they're great at it. I'm sure Tim knows about stuff like that. <laughs> So you might have to go through these a uh, couple of these people. I, I want you to hire somebody on Upwork or Fiverr, not just like a little graphic design thing. What is one pain point in your business that you need help with marketing that you could go on and hire somebody? Has anybody been on Upwork or Fiverr? Yeah? Okay, cool. So you can literally go on by category to graphic and design, web design, copywriting, sales letters, websites, blog posts, articles, and then you can go through and find names of people there's, there's thousands of them all over the world. And you could create criteria. Okay, I only want to spend 12 bucks an hour. And I only want them to work four hours a week. So what's that, 48 bucks a week? Okay, and then other people, they get five-star reviews. Okay, this person has worked for 346 different people and they have a 4.8 five-star review, I mean 4.8 star review. And all these people say they've done a great job. Spend the money and hire them and get them to do that thing that you've really wanted to do in your business and then monitor them. Let them trip on themselves, let them mess up. Maybe they work, maybe they don't. But after two, three, four of these people and a few hundred dollars later, you're going to find a virtual assistant that you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can't even believe it. This person is doing this. Like, like I said, we have seven virtual assistants. Uh, I'll tell you the story of Sonny Suggs. My wife's smiling. Last spring, we're in the office on the laptop, and my wife does project management for a media team. She's really good at it. We were about to go out to dinner, and it was date night. Every Tuesday night, we go on date night, which is like the thing that saved our marriage, because we used to fight all the time, because all I did was work, and, and that was really awesome. I learned that from a guy named Joshua Latimer at the Automate, Grow, Sell, Live Experience. If you guys 
Tim will tell you about that. But uh, we had to go on date night and we had to do this marketing thing for our business. And I'm like, let's hire a virtual assistant to do it for us. And she's like, are you kidding me? That's a waste of money. Why would we hire somebody when I can do it myself, Keith? She, does, she says my name, Keith. It's like, it's, it just cuts right through me. Because a lot of times she's right, but sometimes she's not. And that's why we complement each other very well. And sometimes it's uncomfortable. But I knew this time I had to push through because I learned something the hard way that she hadn't learned yet. And it was hiring a virtual assistant. So we had to do all this uh, uh, something data mining. We had to come uh, data and spreadsheets, which sucks. I literally calculated that this would take us 42 hours to do manually. I'm like, this is going to take like two weeks. This is crazy. She's like, I can do it. I can do it. And she started and she like got nothing done in like an hour and a half, like maybe like you know, seven things out of like 400. I said, that's it. I'm hiring the virtual assistant. I do it. And she was fighting me about this. It was like literally like pulling it from her grip. She, she was like, no way. When you believe something so strong, it becomes so real and solidified. The story you, you tell yourself, we all have this in all different ways. You, don't, you refuse to believe that anything else can be true. And we'll fight to the death about that. So I ripped it from her hands. <laughs> and I gave all this information to Sunny Suggs in Texas. And she's 20 bucks an hour. Um, this is going to cost us hundreds of dollars, but whatever. This needs to get done. So we sent it to Sunny Suggs. She's a nice lady in like her 50s. And she was very happy to work with us. She turned it around in an hour and 20 minutes. And it cost us $30. Like we hadn't even left for date night yet. And she was already done. Here you go. I was like, what? And now my wife says, Sonny Suggs is the shit. Sonny Suggs. And now we like Sonny Suggs and we video chat with her. And she's doing something. She's data mining right now for us. She's working. And we have virtual assistants all over the world. I have a, Eric, got a question? There's a website that lists all the trucking companies in every single city in the entire country. I think US, Canada, and Mexico. Um, I have a VA pull every city that I ask for, and all in spreadsheets, by city, every single trucking company in every city that I wanted in my area. It took like a day, it was like 130 bucks. Thanks. $130. <laughs> How long would that have taken you? So start thinking about this. Step outside of the box in your thinking and say, what do I need to get done? That I keep telling myself I need to get done, but I never get around to doing it. And who could I hire very cheaply to do that? Like I said, you don't have to put these people on payroll. You don't have to bring them into your company. They're freelancers, companies like Upwork. They cover all that. You put the money into their escrow, and then they, it just covers it. People, anything that you want. Uh, Facebook ads, anybody here do Facebook ads for their business? All right, very cool. Uh, I've taken 13 Facebook ads courses. I have three Facebook certifications. And still, because I don't do it every single day, I suck at Facebook ads. How's that possible? Why are you smiling? Because I do the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, so you think, I can do this, I want to learn this, because you feel like if you learn how to do Facebook ads, and, and if you can really get into Facebook ads, it's a whole different monster than you think just looking up from the top of boosting, you know, boosting ads. Or, and you think you know what you're doing, but it's, it's way more complex. It's almost, an, it is an entire career. There are people who have an entire career just doing Facebook ads, and you think just doing it on a Wednesday night or a couple hours here and there and watching some videos on YouTube is going to make you great at Facebook ads. You're going to just piss away money. We have a Facebook ads guy, and he's in Spain, and he's, uh, he's done ads for multiple six-figure launches for huge online personalities, and we hire him for 25 bucks an hour, and he helps with stuff. So uh, Google ads, oh god, anybody here do Google ads? Not just Google ads express, real Google ads with, you do Google ads, Tim? Not personally anymore. So you, that, not personally anymore. You have somebody doing it for you, right? Complicated. Too complicated. So we have a guy in Greece who does Google Ads. And I thought I was all slick. Man, just trust me. 
hire somebody to do it for you. And even they can, they can build it all out for you if you want, and then you can learn the basics, and then you can run. I don't want to get into average ticket price and cost per click because it's way too much here, but hire it out to a virtual assistant. Same with uh, YouTube ads. If you need flyers design, you can stay up all night on Photoshop or Illustrator. Canva works pretty good if you're good at, decent at creating graphic design or you, you have that talent. But chances are you might spend 10 hours when you could have been out selling more work and making dollars, creating a flyer that looks half good or sucks. And you don't understand, is that funny? <laughs> Why it's not converting. And I, I've stayed up all night making Oh, it's okay. I've stayed up all night making stuff that doesn't work. I've stayed up for days. I, I, I wanted to build my own website, and I've built dozens now of web pages, and I'm really good at it now. But I stayed up all night on WordPress. Uh, two nights, or I, I made multiple pots of coffee. I stayed up till 7, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning watching tutorials, trying to build my own WordPress website. And the thing looks stupid, it, it sucked. And I wasted all of that time that I could have just been literally just calling up clients and selling them more work. So if you just look at the basic math, if I spent five hours making a flyer, how many people can I call in five hours? And I could, I could, could probably sell 20 grand in work. I don't know what your business looks like. And then you could just peel off 500 bucks and pay a professional who does it all day, every day, and now, you made 19,500 more re revenue in your business by not doing something stupid. So, so build a team so you can focus on the dream. Think of the things that you need done in your business, your website, your flyer, your marketing design, some advertising, write all that down. Go get a big whiteboard or a poster board, something in your office or your basement, whatever you do, and just draw it out and say, we need these things. We do it with sticky notes. Who are the people that we can hire to take this off our plate and create a budget? I can only spend 500 bucks a month. And go in and organize them in order of priority and start knocking that stuff out that frees up your time so you can be out on date night and not feel guilty about it while you have people behind the scenes doing stuff for you incredibly cheap. There's an amazing book by Thomas L. Friedman called The World is Flat. It came out several years ago, but this book blew my mind because this is normal now. People outsourcing, like trying to do everything yourself or hire people in-house, literally will, if other people are doing this and your profit margins are getting thinner and you're trying to do it all in-house, I don't know what your business looks like, but this is the arbitrage that will get you ahead of the pack and allow you to do things where you might have your competition say, dude, how the hell are you doing all this? Like, I'm out here killing myself every day and you're doing all this. How are you the top-rated company in the city? And you're like, ah, 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 ah. It's because I got all the virtual assistants. I got people helping me do all this. So. Uh, learn how to delegate. This is very, very, very hard for me. I'm a psycho control freak, personally. I feel like nobody can do it as good as I can. And I have uh, held back the evolution of a lot of people and people that have worked for me by being such a control freak. I was so afraid to, let, to see somebody mess up and afraid to let them just trip on themselves until they got good, right? So who here has Google My Business and uses it? Raise your hand. OK, so anybody who's not on it, you have to have the GMB app, Google My Business app uh, on your phone. Use it on your laptop and uh, learn it as quickly as possible. It's an emergency. Like, I'm pretty sure that I know, I know, at least in my city, I live in Michigan. I ask all of our customers how they heard about our services, and we document it and track all the data. And 80% of all of our new customers and clients are coming directly from Google My Business. That means they go on their phone, they're typing in a window cleaner near me pops up. And because we have a verified location in Google My Business, the little red bubble on the map, and it shows a website with positive reviews in a physical location. If you don't have an office, you can use your house or get a virtual office. All the positive reviews are popping up and we're the top rated in our whole city. It's because we ask our customers for positive reviews. It's part of our process of how we market our business. And it all goes on Google My Business, and it's like totally free. So we're always posting on there. It's like the number one thing. I would actually be really pretty nervous if I didn't have this in my business. That's how important it is. And it can also make, what's that? What's your uh, conversion rate on customers you ask to leave 
Yeah, mine's horrible too. We have 93 positive five-star reviews. He said, what's the conversion rate of people that we ask? And um, God, it's gonna be like literally one out of 10 that we can actually get to leave the review. And I had a contractor say something to me once that I wouldn't, almost wouldn't dare think or say, but after he had the guts to say it, it was in a YouTube comment. I was like, oh my God, he's right. He's saying, you'll bend over backwards for a customer and promise them that you do this amazing work and you deliver. And then they'll tell you how good of a job that you did. And they'll be praising you because it was so good. And you ask them to leave you a positive review. And then you, you leave and you follow up with them repeatedly and they still won't fucking leave the review. Like you, you were a man of your word and you had integrity and you showed up and you did what you said you were going to do. And they said they were going to leave you a review, and then they didn't. It's almost like they use you. And I think that if you don't have a positive review or a video or something documenting or showing or echoing off on the internet, the, the social proof, like the five-star review, it's almost like it didn't even happen when it comes to marketing your business. So I got this friend named Bobby Walker. Tim Kroll knows him. And Bobby's a genius at getting positive reviews. He's been business like uh, three years now. He has like 450 positive five-star reviews. So he says when he's on the phone with the customer, and we're implementing this this year, like I just wanna crush it, dude. Um, Mrs. Jones, our goal is to make you so incredibly happy that, I don't know the exact words, that he'll just wanna go online and leave us a positive review. Then when he's on the property, he's talking about the positive review. He's saying it so much that it's so embedded in the customer's mind that the law of reciprocity, and he's also sending them the link and asking them to do it. And he uses nicejob.com to help that, uh, syndicating the email sequence that comes behind it, that's following up the customers, thanking them, sending them gourmet brownies, or asking them for a positive review, that they almost feel guilty if they don't. Like, that's the one thing that you ask them. So if you're very intentional about that on every single job, well, at least the customers that, you know, it's, it's good, then I believe it'll, uh, quadruple the amount of reviews coming in. But as all of us get very caught up, what's up? How do you do it for commercial businesses? My business is 99% residential, so I don't know the answer to that question. Do you know the answer? Well, I, I was, because I'm thinking that's what they're, they're asking. Yeah. Because kind of really, yeah. it's a different, when you're looking for the Google review versus that, I, I, it just, ideas for commercial, to get reviews for commercial. Does anybody here know? The only thing I use is like reference letters. If I'm approaching other commercial customers, I'll have reference letters from previous commercial customers to kind of help. And that's private internal? You send it to them in the email or you have it documented? It's attached. Here's a couple of references to attach. If you want to take a look at them and contact them, go to network. So that would be sweet if you can do that. And also, I mean, just ask them, just like residents, can you go on publicly and leave a positive five-star review? And even if you only get 10, 15, or 20, and the other companies that are your competition have zero or one or three, you're still gonna outshine them by a long shot. So in my city, it's a competition. I'm currently in the lead, but not by much now. I got other guys creeping up against me, and the, and the only thing that's made me in the lead is I just am doing it a lot longer because I didn't have any money to spend on marketing to fall back on. But it's, it's an emergency. So I'm not gonna go into branding your company. Oh, the other guys here talked all about that. Just make sure that everything all across the internet from all your publications to your website, to your business cards, to your flyers, to your shirts, to your logos on your trucks, everything looks the same, it's the same colors, the same fonts, that no matter where anybody goes, they know that that's your company. Everything is matching and there's congruency. <coughs> One font, two maximum. If you are having somebody do your design, you should be able to pick this stuff out. If there's a bunch of different fonts and there's more than just two colors, like look at the colors on the Fleet Wash Academy, all these blue and white. There's a third color for accent, light blue. Simple, simplistic. Too many colors, becomes confusing, and their subconscious mind doesn't know why, but they just don't trust it. So think about that. Price transparency is huge. You could talk about this on your videos. If you have a package that's $97, say it. 
and put it on your website and all your media. Why? Because it's going to it's a negative qualifier. Any people who can't afford that, or they they weren't they were thinking it was going to be thirty nine bucks, and ninety seven is kind of your base. They won't even pick up the phone and call you. So now, just by putting one trans transparent thing, ninety seven bucks. You know, you might have packages that are three ninety seven, five ninety seven, nine ninety seven. But because you put that qualifier transparently on your website, you just saved yourself a whole bunch of time or man hours of picking up the phone and having to talk to all these people saying, oh, well, it's not a good fit because we're more expensive than that. You know what I'm saying? So put your pricing on everything that you do. Call to action, put a call to action on everything that you do. Click here now. Or this, this offer is valid for 30 days. Get 15% off. Always have an action that's telling, a call to action that's telling your customers and prospective clients what to do next. Okay, you like this ad, you like this flyer, this door hanger, this postcard, you went on my website, well here's what you need to do now. Call now, click here, pick up the phone, tell them what to do. If you don't say anything, they might say, okay, cool, and they just go to the next thing. It's the simplest little thing that increases your conversions and makes the difference. It's the difference that makes the difference is the call to action. Claiming local citations. I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> I already talked about that. Uh, this is the biggest thing that's helped us. And so we, we, when we make videos, and if, does anybody here do email marketing? Yeah, okay, so everybody should get a free account at MailChimp.com collect all the data from all your customers, including their email address. And even if it's once a quarter, send out quarterly newsletters, always, always, always popping up in your customer email feeds. So at least when they're ready to buy again, or spend money, you're always in the back of their mind. So you're always staying in contact with them for free through email marketing. Uh, any more questions? What is any website again? Email marketing? Mail, MailChimp.com. So we've done work for 4,300 people in our Tri-City area in Michigan. I've collected all their emails, and I go through and I scrub them. So this is something that only I can do because I know all these customers, but I'll sit down, I've sat down for three and a half hours meticulously scrubbing every customer we've done work for, and I divide it into lists. And I, get it, I got it down to about 700. Like, because there's people you don't want to contact. You don't even want them calling you. So get all that information, and you can uh, go on Google Contacts or whatever you use. If it's Yahoo, you can, you can get all your contacts and export it to a list. Pull it up into a spreadsheet and scrub it and find the top customers and upload all their emails and their names into MailChimp.com. And then just say, hey, this is Joe at Joe's Power Washing. See, uh, just seeing uh, we've done work for you in the past. and. Uh, we're getting really busy seeing if you want to get on the schedule and let's let's get you taken care of let's get your thing washed again whatever that is you make it general but you also make it personal so it sounds like you really actually message them so it doesn't sound like some crazy grandiose advertisement it's personal and then you send that and it shows up so every time we do an email blast i get seven to eight jobs within the first couple weeks even six weeks later i got customers calling saying Oh, I got your email. We want you to come and do our whole property package again. I'm like, man, I sent that six weeks ago. So we're always sending emails out to customers, and it's in a personal way. Uh, another thing we do that's huge is called ringless voicemail. Uh, Joshua Latimer has a company called Send Jim and <coughs> excuse me, uh, Radius Bomb. But there's a thing called Voicemail Bomb. This thing is insane, dude. This is like. This is brilliant. So take all of the customer's phone numbers you've ever done work for, you load it all up into Voicemail Bomb, you take the recorder on your phone, you say, hey, it's Joe with Joe's Pressure Washing. Um, uh, the reason I'm calling you is I can see, uh, our, I'm looking at our, our schedule and we've done some work for you in the past and uh, the spring is rolling around and we're getting pretty busy here. And uh, just seeing if you want to get on the schedule again and uh, we can get you taken care of. My number is 555-1212 or you can email me, joe at joespressurewashing.com. Okay, looking forward to hearing from you. Simple. You upload it into Voicemail Bomb and it sounds like an actual, <coughs> 
excuse me, an actual personal voicemail. Then you press send and it'll go out to a thousand people at once. It bypasses their, their phone ringing and goes directly into their voicemail. And then they get a voicemail and they think you actually sent it to them. So imagine if you could call a thousand people, which, which I was talking about retargeting your existing clients first. If you have to spend money in marketing or advertising dollars or time marketing to new customers to get them into your funnel, well, the smartest thing you would do is you go to the least path of resistance, which is going to your clients you've already done work for, that you've already done transactional business with, and you sell them more shit. <laughs> so you can do that very, very inexpensively. You don't have to sit on the phone for literally two days straight calling all these people. I've done this, we've done this. Yeah. I wouldn't be that customer that would react to I don't know if they'll view it as spam depending on the quality of the recording and how well they're able to articulate that if you make it sound very personal and they might have think they just didn't get the phone ring to hear it but if they know you and you've done work for them before they're going to hopefully if you've made a lasting impression on them you know recognize you and your name and your business and be like oh oh he called us uh, uh, never mind. It just makes sense. And my conversion rate, um, I was too busy to track it. So out of 700, it was pretty, pretty low. Maybe 1% of calls back that actually turned into actual jobs. But we sold, our average ticket price is about 1000 bucks. I could say we sold six to $7,000 in work within a month period based off one voice mail bomb blast to 700 people, which to us is a big deal because now we have walk-ups. So we're on a property again from the voicemail blast and now other customers and clients in the neighborhood are, are, are other potential customers are seeing us work and seeing our trucks, which turns into more work. So it's another avenue that is extremely inexpensive. I think it's worth doing it if you do it in a very personal way that doesn't seem spammy. Because we all hate spam, I can't stand it. Our phones are ringing up all over the place from local numbers about like healthcare insurance shit. Anybody get this? It makes you angry, right? So, any more questions? That was a force a bomb, like B-O-M-B? Yeah, like a bomb. Okay, and the other, and the other app, so Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, -R, and then the other one is Upwork.com. Upwork? U-P-W-O-R-K. Now I called my, I got a buddy named Kurt Kempton. He has a company called uh, Responsibid. We use it on our website. It's like super dope. Customers can come in and get an instant bid. They can get their windows counted or square footage and a video pops up. Hey, I'm Keith, what's going on? You came to get a bid? And then you can basically close them right through your website on autopilot. But I called up Kurt once because I was nervous about spending money on this stuff. And Kurt owns a software company. He does this. I'm like, Kurt, man, like, how much money have you ever spent on a virtual assistant? Are you afraid to spend the money? Perfect question. And he's like, well, I've spent hundreds of dollars an hour on virtual assistants before. But the question is, can, is the money you're spending going to get you an ROI? Are they going to deliver that much value? And if they are, then by all means, it's worth it. It's worth the investment. Does that make sense? So, yeah, any more questions? Is it beneficial oh. to have like a standard five to 10 second introduction on each of your YouTubes? What's the pros and cons to having a professional quick intro to start an interview? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a huge question. He said, is it important to have a, a you know, five, 10, 15 second introduction? And I think you should get that down, write it down. You say, hey, I'm Joe with Joe's Window Cleaning in Washington Heights, so-and-so. And the reason I'm making this video today is because I want to show you this cool thing that we're doing. We're cleaning these windows, or before and after, we're pressure washing. And if you're always saying, hey, I'm Joe with Joe's Window Cleaning in, you know, and then you always say the outro, which is call us at 1555-1212, or go to www.joeswindowcleaning.com, click the link in the description below, that's your call to action, below this video, or below this Facebook post, or below this ad, and call us today, because we're offering free screen cleaning, or we'll give you 10% off the first time. That's like your limiter, your
call to action with your urgency. So when you're saying those things and directing them and telling them what to do, even if you suck at it and you're nervous, at least you're doing it and 99% of the other people aren't doing this. So if you don't care about how you look or you have to be polished and professional, you just, you're just doing your thing, you're just increasing the chances and the likelihood that when they look at the video on their phone, they're gonna call you versus the other guy who doesn't have that. So when you use a uh, virtual assistant, are you trusting them like the email and stuff like that? Because I need to get Trusting them with your private information? Yeah. Yeah, virtual assistants. So we use something called lastpass.com. So lastpass plugs into your Google browser and it allows you to give passwords to people. My wife knows how to use it better than I do. But basically it's like you can grant them access without actually giving them the password and any time you can revoke it and it monitors it. So but it's called LastPass. For instance, like Eric, he had that way to draw all that information. Is that something that that virtual assistant would like hold on to and provide that to maybe a competitor if they end up connecting together in the future? Or have you had any problems? You're talking about a virtual assistant going behind your back? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, so uh, if a virtual assistant is an expert in a specific field, there is a chance that will, they will have done work or be in contact with your competitors. And so that's what I like about Upwork.com. One mistake you should never make if you ever hire a virtual assistant on a platform like Upwork.com is to try to get them off of the platform so you can save money and I'll just hire you privately and I'll give you money through PayPal. Don't do that. It's against the policy. And Upwork has algorithms that can see if you even use the word PayPal or payment, they'll, they'll go right in manually and they'll monitor it to see what's going on and they'll kick you off the platform permanently. So we stay on Upwork. But the reason I said that is because it's good to stay on Upwork because any, um, when you go into a client, a vendor a relationship with the VA, you're entering a contract with them. So Upwork's already paid attorneys and they have all the legal disclaimers and policies and terms of use and contracts that their VAs sign upon becoming a freelancer within the program that now they're legally bound and they're legally liable that if they do anything like that, they, they will be held accountable by law. So they're not gonna wanna do stuff like that. So it screens them. It doesn't mean then they still couldn't, but it highly decreases the chances. So that's what I like about Upwork is that there's, they're being monitored. Uh, you had a question back there? Yeah, when you're posting content, if you're just starting, do you recommend going to each social media account to post, or can I do something on YouTube and just make a YouTube video to my other accounts? Um, so this is a repurposing content and content syndication. He's asking like, so there's an amazing book by Gary Vaynerchuk called Jab, 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 Right Hook. I'm obsessed with this stuff. I went into the day it came out and I sat down in Barnes and Nobles. I didn't even have to buy the book because I sat down for three hours and I read the whole book. I couldn't stop reading it. So basically every social media platform has its own completely unique, different native language that if you were to go and, and, and communicate that way on Facebook versus YouTube versus Instagram, it, it, it wouldn't, makes sense. Like Snapchat, funny, quick stuff, Facebook. How can I say this without getting too deep into it? I say the best way to do it without, is to just do it. Copy and paste the content across all platforms. When I was talking about the syndication model that we do, we make one good piece of content per week and then we chop it up and share it, the same exact content on all the different social media platforms. So now what we're doing is we're creating a 1500 word blog post article and making a video about everything that was in that blog post. We embed the YouTube video into the blog post and then we chop up the YouTube video and we put it on Instagram and then we put that on LinkedIn, right? And then we chop it up and we put it on, uh, we're doing TikTok now, we're doing Facebook. We upload the video natively into Facebook, right? And now we have a virtual assistant doing all that for us. But, and if you can't, do it, it's not working, just go out and physically repeat the same message. In 20, I mean, I still do this, this is crazy. I'll make a Facebook post, uh, you know, I'll be like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, upload to Facebook. 
One second. All right, I've got to go on Instagram. I'll manually do the same thing on Instagram. And then I'll do it on Snapchat. And then I'll do it on TikTok. And I'm literally saying the same thing over and over and over in real time, just in a different way for each platform. But this shit's crazy. I'll be literally sitting here for like 15 minutes and my wife is like, let's go. And the dogs are right there. Like, you don't have time for this stuff, right? So the best way, I was telling you the right way to do it, but the best way is to make one piece of content and just chop it up and share it across all these platforms. And since you're running a real service business and you don't have time to do all this, even if you do it once a month, so it's out there and it's like a pulse. You know what I'm saying? So, more we're questions, you had a question? Tim? Something on that, and just so you guys are aware, like Facebook owns its own algorithm. Google owns its own algorithm, and they don't like each other. They want to keep you on that algorithm. And that's why what Keith is saying is really important, is to upload each channel because they don't want to share something from somebody else's algorithm. So it's important to upload that based on that thing the law. Excuse me. Yeah, so if you, if you make a YouTube video and you share the link to Facebook, Facebook is going to clamp down and not let that be visible. Only a few people who are actually going on your page looking will see it. And the visibility rate could be as low as 1%. Now, if you take the actual video, we natively upload every single video to YouTube. Same exact video uploaded directly into Facebook on the business page and on the personal page. Then we natively upload that to Instagram TV. If you're just, what's that? Yes, and Facebook is clamped down that you can't even auto share with sites anymore like meetedgar.com. I mean, you can spend money on all these different softwares that allow you to automate this stuff, but the social media platforms now in 2020 have made it so they will penalize you for automation. They will flag your account if you do automation or destroy your reach because what you're doing is you are destroying the user experience. If you look at MySpace back in the day, and even it started to happen on Facebook until they clamped down on it, these marketers or people that get good at this stuff, they can step away from manually creating great content and a great user experience, and now the feed just gets just flooded with a bunch of shit that people are just, like Twitter is garbage because people are just auto-sharing to it all day. It's just like, it's literally a garbage dump. They don't want their social media platform to be a garbage dump because it creates a, a place where advertisers don't want to spend money because people aren't, and it's all about money. So creating great content for each individual platform natively is the answer. That makes sense? Any more questions? Yes? But that's what I was saying. Instagram has this function in it where you can link accounts and specifically Instagram and Facebook and then you know, Instagram and Twitter. So if you're sharing, like, let's say you're sharing images, that's the idea then is that you're sharing in multiple platforms, like non unique information. Like, it's not unique to that particular platform. So don't do that. Like, don't utilize that. Yes. Now, it's less harsh with Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Because Facebook owns Instagram, so if you're automatically auto-sharing what goes, because you see the option on there, automatically share to Facebook. That's cool. My, I have a buddy, I can't say his name, he's getting something insane, like 10 million views a month on his Facebook business page. He's a social media guy. He's, it's not just for his service business. And he says, this is crazy. I'm not even paying attention to it. Facebook called me, and they, they wanted to... Uh, they put him in the special program. He's like, I'm not even paying attention to it. I'm just auto sharing it from Instagram. I don't even care. That's the way he said it. And I'm like thinking about that. That goes in the face of what I just said. It's probably because Facebook owns Instagram, so their algorithms favor each other. Because at the end of the day, it's just more ad dollars in their pocket. Any more questions? Wife of Tron has a question. Yeah. When you do a YouTube video, make sure in the description, like when you start getting going and you have more videos, like make sure you add a link to another video on YouTube in the description. So then that way YouTube's going to recognize that and then they're going to go, oh, well, they're keeping these people on this platform now because you're putting another link 
of YouTube in the description of your YouTube video. That's really smart that she said that, and that's a great point. So the platform rewards you for keeping people on that nat native platform. If you're trying to pull people off the platform and take them uh, outbound and pull them to your website, they're only happy about you doing that if you're giving them dollars to do it. So otherwise, you just want to keep them on that platform. And the rule is you should never ever do a call to action on social media and tell somebody to leave and call you or click on your website unless you're getting paid. Unless you're getting paid might mean just bringing somebody to your website, which means your website and the copy and, and everything better be very compelling to where you're getting dollars in exchange for hurting your reach. On YouTube, like she said with the links, Put YouTube links to your most popular other videos. Hey, if you like this video, check out this video. That way, it's getting them to stay on YouTube. And the reason you want to do that, especially just for your local service business, is because if you can get a lot of views ranking on YouTube and, in, and, in, and embedding a YouTube video into your website even, is the more, so when, when people come to your YouTube channel and they watch your videos, and the more people watch and the more people watch longer, YouTube says, all right, this is good content. There's a good user experience. They're going to promote you up the search ranking algorithm and showing in the suggested videos. Or if a customer is searching for power washing near me, and your video isn't just sending people directly to the website, it's sending them the other videos you made, YouTube likes that. So they're going to suggest your video before somebody else who's not doing it that way. Does that make sense? So instead of them, does that make, okay, what's the question? You're talking about auto share, you're talking about like a third party thing like Buffer. Yeah, Buffer, Hootsuite, Later.com, all those. So I'm getting advice now, it says in 2020, don't use any of that stuff, do it all manually. But if you don't have time to do it all, period, like, like I gotta throw mud at the wall and see what sticks, I just don't have the time. Because there's a thing that says, is like the best practices. You have to do it absolutely the right way and 100% legit and perfectly legal or whatever, or you can't do it at all. I mean, that's the thing that stops people from getting their foot in the door and, and doing it. See, I, I really believe that you're better off at least doing it half-ass than doing nothing. So that's why I say just do it. We good? Anything else? Or you have your virtual assistants do that too instead of doing like Buffer or one of They're manually doing it, okay. yeah. And it's, it's totally worth it because it's so cheap. We got it, we're getting it down to a science now to where I just make one main video. Like for instance, this is all being videotaped. I give my editor 250 bucks. He sits there for 15 hours. He's gonna edit this whole video. It's gonna go on YouTube. Then we use Google Transcribe and we set the phone down next to the laptop. Everything that I spoke today is gonna be transcribed. Then we take that and we go on Grammarly.com and we fix any misspelling so it looks good and then we send that off to our editor who he's gonna edit it all and then that goes to my wife and she turns it into a blog post. Then she's gonna, edit, she's gonna embed the video into the blog post and then everything I spoke today is gonna be extracted via MP3 and sent to my virtual assistant in Asia and this is gonna be turned into a podcast, right? And then clips of what I said today, any stuff that made me look cool or made sense that could create value for other people. It doesn't make me making me look cool, but you know what I'm saying. It's it's. I don't want to put out something that I said that was me stupid or stuttering or like wiping my nose. But little clips of this are actually going to go on Instagram and be shared to the story, which are going to get people to click to go to my website. So we're taking one piece of content that happened in real time and it's being echoed off on the internet to thousands and thousands of people and being shared all over the place. And now it's going to become evergreen so anybody can go back to that who gets into Keith Kelfus's world on the internet and they can now find this five years from now. I have people coming up and help his hand went up. How much do you think that process is going to cost you with all your VAs that you have to do with that process you just said? <sighs> Uh, 350 bucks and 35 million <laughs> yeah but uh 
so I do social media marketing. I make money doing social media. I get paid off YouTube and I sell books and I sell online courses and all that stuff and I do affiliate deals. So where I'm at is totally different. I don't expect any of you guys to do that. I did this for free. My wife and I, I mean, we, we were stuck living in a one bedroom apartment next to like crackhead neighbors because the rent was cheap so I can build all this because I wanted to do this so bad. And now it's at the point where it's making us you know, really decent money. But what I love about it is this is all the same stuff on a smaller scale that works in a service business. This is what arbitrage is. It's cross-pollinating information from different industries. You got these guys like, Tim keeps looking at me. It's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. When I look at you, I see this like look in your eyes because you're so aware of all this stuff. And not that any of you guys aren't, it's just no Tim's on a different level, but you can cross pollinate and take information that's working in a different industry, like in the tech world, and then take it and put that technology into your service business. And you can get these dispropor disproportionate results. This emergent property happens that allows you to just like scale ahead of everybody else and get really, really good results for small efforts just because you are taking outside information. That's what I love about this. And this stuff is happening now and more and more people are waking up to it. That's why everything I'm talking about today is just so damn important to put in your business as soon as possible. Because if you don't, then two, three, four years goes by and you're really, really, really gonna regret it. And because it's gonna come right out of our bank accounts. I mean, companies that are catching on to these, especially these younger guys that are coming on who understand the internet very well, they're gonna get into business and just start smoking us. And so that's why we gotta do it. He's trying to, what are you trying to clap? Are we? Oh, he's hungry, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, everything I talked about today, uh, you can get it. The seven steps to marketing your business. I have it in a, in a, a PDF doc download. Uh, you can get all, if you text the word untrapped to 31996 on your phone, then you can get it all. The secret is I'm gonna take your phone number and I'm gonna try to sell you my course. So you don't have to buy it or anything, but you can get it all online. I'm just being very transparent about that. I'm not trying to do a sales pitch to you, but that's what will happen if you text. Right, thank you. Thank you.